What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson. And today, I'm gonna show you how I made this. Beautiful, delicious, home cured picanha pastrami on top of some scratch made marble rye. And of course, some homemade sauerkraut for the perfect Reuben sandwich. Coming up. This is some meat. Pat them dry. Some absolutely beautiful picanhas. And I gotta say, making pastrami out of picanha is something I've been thinking about for a while now. It just seems to make sense, you know? It's one of my favorite cuts of beef. Definitely top three. It's full of beefy flavor. It's got a wonderful fat cap on it. And it's much smaller than a brisket, meaning it's gonna cook quicker and we're gonna end up with a much more reasonable amount of pastrami at the end of the day. And because it's such a lovely tender cut, it should slice up into some beautiful pastrami for some absolutely fantastic sandwiches. My only gripe with picanha is that it's a sirloin cut, meaning it doesn't have a lot of intramuscular fat. And other than that beautiful fat cap, it's a pretty lean piece of meat. But not these, because these are some Wagyu picanhas that I got from the sponsor of this week's video, RC Ranch. RC Ranch is a family-owned ranch just a few hours down the road in Houston, Texas. And I gotta say, I'm super pumped to be working with them because they just put a lot of care into every part of the process to create this amazing beef. And I must say, this is some of the best American Wagyu that I've got my hands on. And to know that it's locally sourced from just down the road here in Texas really makes me happy. And because they practice full carcass utilization, nothing goes to waste. And you can also get a lot of those off cuts, those butcher cuts that you're not gonna see at your local grocery store. Store. They also work closely with a lot of chefs and pit masters for a true ranch to table experience. There's no middleman involved. Every piece of meat you get from them is from their ranch in Houston, butchered there. They also have their own butcher shop where they're making all sorts of good sausages and charcuterie. And I gotta say, the marbling is absolutely amazing. Not to mention just the attention to detail, you know? This is such a nicely shaped, well trimmed up picanha. There's no silver skin on there. Fat cap is looking nice. And you can tell these guys know what they're doing. And now they're offering shipping online right to you, straight from their butcher shop to your home. So if you want to try some of the best Wagyu Texas has to offer, head to rcranch.com. I'll have a link in the description box of this video where you can get 15% off your order using the code CHUDS15. Again, link in the description, that's rcranch.com using code CHUDS15 to get 15% off. I highly recommend it. Now, if you've never cooked a picanha before, there are several ways to go about doing it. You could cook it as a whole roast, just like this. In Brazil, they'll cut it into steaks and pop it on a big skewer and cook it that way and shave it right onto your plate. Or you could just cut it into regular steaks and cook them however you want. And because it does seem like a little bit of sacrilege to be brining, such a beautiful piece of meat that's typically just cooked with salt. We're only gonna be pastrami-ing one of these things. Probably this guy, which means this one we can cut up into some steaks. And when cutting these into steaks, you wanna cut with the grain. So the final cut, once you're cutting up the steak at the end, will be against the grain. Oh yeah, I love me some picanha, folks. Beautiful looking steak. The marbling on that is something you do not see with your average picanha. Very exciting. Just a sight of beauty, folks. If you've never had a Wagyu picanha before, I highly recommend picking one up because it really is the best of both worlds. And that's something I talk about a lot on this channel, that is, if you're gonna be spending the money on Wagyu, I highly recommend getting a cut that's typically very lean. Having that extra fat in there just brings a whole new experience to it. So I definitely recommend picking up a sirloin or a tri-tip or something like that. Very excited about these. Probably gonna cook one up for dinner. Mm, love it. Anywho, for this guy, this is what we're gonna be turning into pastrami. So let's go ahead and get our brine ready. Starting by toasting off some of our spices, including some coriander seeds, some mustard seeds, allspice berries, some black peppercorns, some juniper berries, a couple of cloves, cinnamon stick, and some red chili flakes. We're just gonna let those toast for just a minute, kind of unlock those oils, get nice and fragrant. Once you can really start smelling it, that's when you know you are nicely toasted. <coughs> I shouldn't have thrown in the chili flakes. Next up, we're gonna go in with two quarts of water as well as some crushed garlic, a couple of bay leaves, our salt, brown sugar, and of course, our pink curing salt. And let it come up to a simmer. Looking good, smelling amazing, all those warming spices really coming together. But once all that salt and sugar is dissolved, it's time to go into our vessel. Beautiful. And now to rapidly cool this off, we're gonna go in with the rest of our water in ice water form. Now you could easily just put your meat into this brine and give it a good seven to 15 days, but I'm not that patient. So we're gonna go ahead and bust out the old injector. Not much to it, folks. Just gonna pump this thing as full as I can. It's kind of fun watching it inflate like that. Just trying to get this as evenly filled up as possible to make sure we have even brine penetration. It always feels weird injecting meat, but injecting a picanha feels really weird. But you know, someone's gotta do it for science. And just like that, this pastrami is holding just about as much as I think it can take. So now what we're gonna do is take the rest of our brine and just submerge it. Oh God, he's making a mess. Oh, we got a floater. Because this brine is mostly gonna affect the meat, not so much the fat, I'm gonna flip this over and then throw a plate right on top. And that should keep this thing nicely submerged for the next, mm, probably day and a half, maybe 36 hours. 
There's a rake in my boot. Let's check in on our picanha, shall we? Get this plate out of there. Ooh, feeling much heavier than it did the other day. I tell you what, folks, looking good. But before we move forward, I'm gonna go give this a quick rinse just to get rid of some of these extra seeds and berries and any extra salt and sugar that may be on this thing. Beautiful, looking good, feeling nice and dense. I am sure that this is gonna be absolutely fantastic. But first, let's make a rub. Starting with some coriander. Beautiful. Equal parts freshly ground coriander with some 16 mesh black pepper. And we'll throw a half part of garlic powder in there too, why not? No need for any salt in this rub because this thing is fully cured. Love it. Starting on the back side here, I'm gonna go around and cover this thing with our rub. Flip it over, flip it over. Get that fat cap all nice, nice. And please, folks, don't forget the sides. Rookie move. Looking good to me. On the pit we go. Fat cap up, thick side toward the fire, sitting right about there. Looks good. We're gonna rock this pit around 250 for the first few hours, then probably bump it up to around 275, 280, and we'll check back in in a little bit. While that pastrana cooks, let's make some marble rye bread. Starting with some warm water some dry yeast, some bread flour, and some dark rye flour. Give that a little mix. Oops, forgot the salt. And just let that come together. After about 10 minutes of kneading, we're gonna go in with our caraway seeds. And just get those evenly incorporated. Beautiful. Out this dough comes. Then we're gonna split this dough into a 60-40. Ooh, so close. Perfect. 60% of the dough will be our white in the marble rye into a grease bowl, that goes to rise. And the rest will be our dark. So into the stand mixer it goes yet again with some molasses, ooh, as well as some cocoa powder, just to add even more color. And just mix that to combined. Beautiful. Into yet another greased bowl. And we'll check back in on these in like an hour and a half. Once doubled in size, uh, out they come. And we're just gonna degas these guys and get them into some rectangular shapes. Looking good. On we go with our dark rye onto the light rye. Dead all nice and stretched out. And we really wanna make sure that these stick together. Otherwise, it'll look weird in the final bread. And I got this recipe from Brian Lagerstrom. As I do a lot of my bread recipes, it's either him or Josh Weissman. Two great food tubers. Highly recommend checking them out if you have not already. And then trying to get this roughly the size of my loaf pan here. We're now gonna try and roll this thing up. This is not my best work. This is a little thick on this end. It is what it is. This is my first time trying this. So we're gonna fold it this way, pinch that down, and just kind of roll it up into a nice log, trying to get it as tight as possible. And we're gonna pinch the bottom to make sure it's all nicely stuck together. And that'll do. Definitely not very pretty. Grease up our little loaf pan here, yeah. and seam side down, in we go. And now to let this rise for about another 45 minutes. Well, well, let's check it in on this picanha, shall we? Ooh, looking real nice. It has been four hours. Let's see what she's re- Oh, that feels tender. About 175, 180. Yeah, I think it's time to wrap this thing up. Going with a trusty foil boat, which is something that I think is gonna work out perfectly for this. Keep that underside nice and juicy while continuing to render this big old fat cap. Honestly, that was way too much foil. I forgot that this isn't a brisket. But back on the pit, this goes for probably only another hour or so. This foil is gonna help speed up the cook and make sure this thing is nice and juicy. Next up, let's make a quick Russian dressing, shall we? Starting with one egg. Not my best crack. No shell, nice. A shot of some Dijon mustard and some lemon juice. And get that mixed up. And then drizzle in some avocado oil, nice and slowly. And now we have one cup of mayonnaise. Next up, going in with one half of one shallot, a couple cloves of some freshly crushed up garlic, a couple tablespoons of some sweet relish, and of course, some ketchup. Almost forgot the Worcestershire sauce. Very similar to Thousand Island dressing or burger sauce. Get that all mixed up. Taste it for seasoning. Needs a little more lemon. And our Russian dressing is done. And now that our bread is nicely proofed, we're gonna go around and score it a few times with this bread lame I just got. Pretty excited about that. Just to make it look pretty. And now into a 400 degree oven, this goes for the next 30 minutes. 
bread is in the oven. Our pastrami is almost done. We've got our Russian dressing made. I got Swiss cheese at the ready. So the last thing we need to talk about for our Reuben sandwich is some sauerkraut, which luckily I got started two weeks ago. Making sauerkraut is super easy. It's two ingredients, cabbage and salt, and then you just gotta wait for it to ferment. Then we're gonna cut on either side of this core to remove it. Beautiful, beautiful. From here, we're gonna slice it as thick or as thin as you like, about a quarter inch. Next up, into a bowl it goes. And we're gonna weigh this cabbage. And then we're gonna add 2% salt. And that's it. At this point, we're gonna get in there and massage this and mix it up. Very similar to making kimchi. We want this salt to really penetrate this cabbage and start drawing out all the moisture. So we're just gonna be kind of rough with it because essentially what's gonna happen is the salt is gonna pull out a bunch of water and that's gonna act as the brine for this cabbage. And after just a few seconds, it's already starting to feel moist. After a nice mixing, I'm gonna let this sit for about 10, 15 minutes, come back and do it again. About 15 minutes later, this is looking nice and wilted. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of liquid in there, which is exactly what we want. So now into our jar we go and make sure all that brine gets in there as well. And it's at this stage too, you could go through and add some other flavorings if you like, you know, mustard seeds, some caraway seeds would be really nice. But today we're gonna keep it pretty simple. Let the lacto fermentation do all the souring and add all the flavor for us. A very classic classic sauerkraut. Once it's all in there, get yourself a sausage plunger and just start mashing it in. And the name of the game here is to make it so it's completely submerged in its own brine. Looking good to me. So lid goes on. And because I don't have a fancy airlock on this, I'm gonna have to come through and burp this every couple of days. Just, you know, open it up, let some of the pressure out because we don't want this exploding on us. Into my kitchen this goes, it's gonna sit just like this at room temperature for one to two weeks. Two weeks later, I ended up putting a piece of plastic on top to make sure everything was submerged and didn't oxidize. And this is looking really nice. Zero mold or anything like that, which is good. Sometimes that can happen in fermentation. Oh God, it smells so good. And there we go. Some beautiful homemade, home fermented sauerkraut. Let's give it a little taste, shall we? Oh, that is lovely. Mm. Perfectly seasoned, beautiful flavor on there. I think two weeks is definitely the sweet spot for fermentation. Not too sour, not too funky, but still full of flavor. And now our bread is coming out of the oven. Ooh, that's hot. Honestly, not a very great looking loaf of bread, but this is my first time working with rye flour and it does behave a bit differently than regular flour. So we'll have to see how the inside looks. But first we gotta let this thing cool down a little bit. And conveniently, our little pastrami picanha is done as well. Took about five and a half hours in total to get this thing cooked up, which is a win for the picanha over a brisket. Bark is looking nice, fat's feeling nicely rendered. Smells absolutely amazing. And this thing is rocking right around 200 degrees internal. So while the bread rests, this will rest as well. All right, I can't wait any longer. Let's see how this thing looks. Ooh. Oops. Oh no. Yes, please. Plenty of juices in there. That looks phenomenal. Lovely bark on there. Just the tip. Oh, beautiful color. Look at that, folks. Brian definitely did its job. Big old fat cap on there. Nicely rendered, though. Probably could have trimmed that down a little bit, but exquisite marbling in there. Nice and red, nice and tender. Oops. Oh, well, I got this piece here. Oh, oh my God. Mm. I take back what I said about that fat cap. That is beautiful. It just melts full of pastrami flavor, folks. It's got those nice warming notes, nice and salty, a little bit of sweet. Mm. That fat just turns into butter. I know everyone always compares barbecue to butter, but that is the exact texture of softened butter. All right, let's get a few more slices, shall we? That really is a sight of beauty. And obviously for your sandwich, you can make these as thick or as thin as you see fit. I'm going for kind of typical brisket slices. That is incredible. So juicy. Nice brine penetration too. Yeah, it turns out picanha makes for some fantastic pastrami with a beautiful bark. Love it. All right, let's get the rest of our sandwich made. Nice crust. Not a bad marble. Pretty good looking crumb on there too. Definitely got a little cornhole in the middle there, but that's fine. Beautiful, smells absolutely fantastic. Starting out with a nice thick smear of our homemade Russian dressing. Both sides, folks, come on. Followed by a nice shingling of our picanha pastrami. Oh, yes, please. One more time, come on. Yeah, one more for good measure. Oh man, I forgot the cheese first. Got a little bit of Swiss cheese. There we go. Yeah, we're doubling up. Top this behemoth with some of our beautiful homemade sauerkraut. Top goes on. And then of course, we gotta butter toast this guy. So a little shmi of butter on top and then onto the flat top this goes. Butter this top side real quick, edge to edge. And we'll give it a flip. 
Oh my gosh. Now that is a sight of beauty. And there it is in all its glory. The homemade bread, the house cured picanha pastrami, all coming together for a beautiful Reuben. Let's get that cross section, shall we? Oh. Tell me you don't want to take a bite out of this right now. Come on, folks. And yeah, I did make two. Oh, would you just look at it, folks? We got some chips and a pickle for the classic deli experience. But I gotta say, that's looking nice and juicy, and I cannot wait any longer. It is time to take a bite. Come to daddy. Ooh. I haven't been this excited for a sandwich in a very long time. Oh. Mm. 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 That is absolutely fantastic, folks. I gotta say, there is nothing like a good pastrami sandwich, but something about the picanha just works so well. It's just so tender, so smoky. Mm. It's so good. This might be the best sandwich I've made on the channel yet, folks. I tell you what. And I don't plan on stopping. Mm. So good. Just the amount of textures going on is so good. You get that meat, which is super tender, that fat, which is really creamy, a little bit of crunch from the sauerkraut. This bread is a lot heartier than some of the enriched doughs I've been making lately, which really holds up well to the sandwich. Damn. Mm. Unbelievable. Mmm, that's so good. Yeah, this is very balanced. Delicious, babe. I love the crunchies. The textures are all working. Not too smoky either. Mm -mm. Which is a good thing for a sandwich. Mm -hmm. Nothing's overpowering. I can still taste it though. Mm-hmm. Mm, it's so good. Honestly, the best part about this sandwich is I put the meat on it 2 p.m. and we're eating dinner and it's actually dinner time. A normal hour. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to a brisket where we'd be eating this tomorrow. Yeah, you know, I noticed you were making the kraut and it's been up there for a long time. Mm-hmm. But I was expecting it to be a lot more stinky. Yeah. And it's not. Just look at the color of that meat. Oh. Mm. What? Who? All right, without further ado, I think it's time for the official taste test. It's just so juicy. Come on. I gotta say, that definitely was some of the best pastrami I've ever made or even ever had. And Guga, if you're watching, please don't slap me. I know you say only salt goes on picanha, but it really does make for some excellent pastrami. And I think you should give it a try. But anywho, that is how to make an absolutely fantastic Reuben sandwich from scratch. That really is one of the best sandwiches I've ever had. With that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. Feel free to drop a comment down below letting me know what you want to see me cook next. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace!